audience here. Um, my name is Tang Lin Li. Uh, I'm from DAS Group. And uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about the work I've been uh, working on. And uh, this is uh, try to enable a independent metadata mechanism uh, for large scale uh, IO, parallel IO system. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, cover a couple of topics. So in the background, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, a little bit of the uh, evolving process of the uh, scientific application uh, along with the supercomputers and the parallel storage and I.O. And the why parallel I.O. and the middleware and metadata, uh, they matter to the uh, scientific applications. And for the motivation, uh, I'm going to show uh, what's the problem of the current uh, method of operation with the uh, IO middleware. Uh, so here I'm going to uh, use the HDF5 as the example. And uh, uh, that's also the context for the whole, uh, whole talk here. So the, to solve that problem, uh, we have uh, met a couple of challenges and uh, also we gave uh, some solutions to solve out. So majorly uh, this is about uh, system design and uh, implementation, especially uh, in context of the uh, distributed uh, and uh, parallel environment. And uh, then after that, uh, I'm going to show some uh, preliminary results. Uh, because this, this is just a, uh, just a prototype, although it's functioning, uh, uh, the performance is not that well, um, but function-wise, uh, it works pretty good now. And then it's the conclusion. So first of all, uh, in the beginning, uh, a scientist will have a problem to solve. Uh, like a weather simulation uh, or a particle uh, simulation. simulation. So when you have a problem and you have a computer to solve that and you will uh, build your machine a data set to do, to do all those computation. So the resource you have is a, a machine, local hard drives, and you can, uh, you can use uh, multi-threading to do the, uh, to utilize your uh, multiple cores. And also at this stage, pretty much uh, most of the uh, application have their own uh, data format. And then uh, as your research proceeds, uh, you got a bigger problem to solve. Uh, and because you have more funding and you build a cluster uh, to solve that uh, bigger problem. And uh, you, have the, uh, you also have built the shared file system uh, because the data set is so big to and it's too big to fit in, uh, into any uh, single uh, hard drive uh, of the machine. So a shared file system, either it's an FS or it's a uh, parallel file system uh, like uh, GPFS will work this one. And uh, also at this stage, uh, because you have to um, talk across uh, multiple nodes in the cluster, uh, you're gonna use the MPI and also you're gonna uh, use the, some generic data formats and middlewares like H5, NSDF, uh, and some others. And, uh, and then uh, you make a big, prog big progress and uh, uh, now you have an uh, even bigger problem to solve and the DOE built you a supercomputer uh, to help, help with that. Uh, but, uh, Things are getting uh, getting complicated because um, you got so many different kinds of uh, components into the whole system, uh, and also uh, because of the uh, communication and uh, the latency patterns and uh, all those concurrency issues uh, becomes more obvious uh, as the uh, scientist it becomes overwhelmed and uh, you have to understand how to. Uh, utilize the uh, 
multi-tier of the storage uh, and accelerators, and you have to uh, write CUDA uh, and uh, use InfiniBand and all those fancy things to uh, to fully utilize the uh, those big machines. And then uh, after you make some progress on all of these, uh, you uh, you find uh, people stop to talk you uh, stop to call you a scientist. They start to call you a computer scientist. And uh, you feel this is quite uh, distracting uh, because you are out of track of your own research. And uh, this is the why uh, you want to leave all, all of this complexity to, the, uh, to, the, to a computer scientist and uh, uh, computer engineers. So the supercomputers involved in this way. So uh, as the uh, more cores and com computer resource introduced to the uh, whole system, you also get a, a deeper story hierarchy because uh, the performance gap between the uh, compute and the story resource are getting uh, more and uh, getting wider. And the, uh, generally, uh, the way to uh, fix that problem uh, is to introduce more layer of cache buffers and uh, uh, also many more. So in this case, we can, uh, we can see in the figure, uh, it actually shows two types of burst buffers, not local one uh, and also globally uh, shared uh, burst buffer. As long as the um, parallel file system data and the metadata servers. And this is all getting, uh, getting really complicated. And that's why uh, we really need something to, to hide all of these complexity and uh, only to expose simple, uh, really simple API to the uh, application. So it's the uh, IO middleware here to hide all of these. And uh, a project like the HDL5 and the NetCDFs uh, play an important role here. And uh, not just to provide the uh, rich features, like to give you a, a view of a, a single file to hold all your data, uh, which is uh, much larger than any of the uh, uh, any of your uh, hard drives. And also, uh, you will you will transparently uh, utilize all those uh, newly introduced layers, like um, uh, first buffers and new caches. So in the, in, uh, in the figure showing here, uh, this is the a typical HDF5 file, and uh, that contains metadata and data, and uh, they are all uh, stored in the in those data servers in the uh, Luster file system, which is the parallel uh, file system. So uh, with this uh, IO middleware, the parallel data access pattern generally look like this. So each of the process or each of the uh, MPI rank have their uh, own um, application running. And uh, all the data either is read or write, they'll have a, a local, local cache and have a local copy of that. Um, to avoid the conflicts uh, writing to the same, uh, same place, they're asked to only write to their own, uh, their own chunks or blocks here. So each of them uh, uh, write to the, either is read or write, they're uh, not uh, hitting the same place. So you can see uh, pretty much the, uh, they own their own data entries here. And for metadata, if that's the read case, it's also uh, pretty similar. But the only difference here is uh, when, you're, when you're doing the uh, metadata read, like you want to uh, open a data set here, uh, in your use case, uh, each of the rank uh, open a data set. 
and uh, they own uh, they own the, their own data set. So they will launch, uh, they will load the uh, corresponding metadata into their own uh, local cache. Although these pieces, of, although all of these uh, local metadata cache uh, can have some, it can have some overlap, some something uh, like uh, the metadata described the, the file structure and things like that. Um, and also they have some something uh, of their own, uh, like the uh, metadata describing their own their own data entry. And that's a part not, not overlapped. But because there, there's no change made in any of this, uh, any of this cache, so uh, technically, all of these cache are still consistent, although uh, they, although they may not look like the same because they are just a, a different pieces of the whole picture, and the whole picture are still the same. So consi consistency here is not a problem. So when you try to write something like you want to create a dataset from each of the uh, rank, then problem happens because. Uh, each rank have, uh, have their own local metadata cache. Uh, the change, uh, the local change will, uh, will put there first and, uh, and then to flush to the disk, uh, right, uh, right to the uh, metadata file. But the problem, the problem here is because each change made by the ranks are different. So, to merge all of these, actually, you're uh, you're trying to merge in a bunch of different things all together, and that that creates uh, inconsistent views of metadata. And also, it is possible uh, if uh, if two of the uh, two ranks wants to. Uh, write to the same metadata, it is possible, although. Uh, although the uh, system will try to uh, prevent that, but still uh, it can happen. Then uh, in this case, you will, uh, um, will create conflicts up there and uh, the metadata will be, uh, will be uh, masked. So to avoid all those um, metadata corruption or uh, conflicts, the actual way uh, used, uh, used by HL5 and also a similar uh, mechanism uh, in the NetCDF uh, is the collective metadata update. So in this way, each of this, uh, every single process or ranks are asked to, uh, to do exactly the same thing. So here, here you can see it's not like uh, uh, process one create the data set one and uh, uh, rank two create data set two. Actually, they have to create everything and this happened on every single rank. And uh, this, is, this actually is quite counterintuitive counter to uh, uh, application uh, developer. So the way uh, the way they are doing this is try to uh, create a consistent view. So uh, each of the each of this small uh, small method of cache will look look like the same, and then uh, they will reach the uh, collective sinking sinking point, and there are barriers there, and also uh, at that at that place. Uh, the system will check the sanity and to make sure uh, all the cons uh, all the metadata uh, sub metadata change submitted are uh, are consistent, and then uh, and then you will uh, finally flush to the uh, file system. So the, this is the, uh, the current, uh, current way to uh, avoid the metadata uh, corruption. But this creates a problem. So the biggest problem is the, uh, the program, programmability. Because 
if you want to uh, write an MPI program, and uh, if you uh, do a data set create uh, in one of the ranks, actually you mean, I, I just want to create my own rank, uh, my own data set here. Uh, but uh, you actually have to do the similar thing for all other ranks. So the program will, uh, will look like this, uh, the lower box. You have to do this in the, uh, in the for loop or, or a similar thing uh, for all the ranks. This is not a big problem if uh, it's running uh, with a small cluster, uh, but if you are running with any of the uh, large scale supercomputers, this will be a problem. Um, thinking uh, if you have to run every uh, run on the every single rank and uh, to create uh, a million of the data set on each of the uh, each of the ranks, then that will be a uh, really mess. And also, it's not just the uh, just the, the uh, code look more uh, complicated. It also uh, causes a, a big bottleneck uh, over there because because we, we see there will be a uh, collective thinking point here. So to uh, so to make sure everything is, is right. So it's not just the uh, data set grid. There are quite uh, quite a few other calls, and uh, all of these actually uh, are collective, and uh, they happen uh, pretty often uh, in during an uh, application running, especially when uh, when the data sets are uh, changed frequently. So the impact either to the performance or to the uh, to the uh, code logic will be uh, quite big. So. To solve this problem, uh, we we'll propose a system to do the independent metadata meta changes. And uh, to achieve this goal, uh, we have three major challenges to address. The first one uh, is the most obvious one. So it's the multiple concurrent write. And this is the traditional uh, consensus problem. So it's just like uh, uh, four different people want to write, uh, write on the same, same uh, piece of paper at the same time. And um, the way to do that is to uh, make a consensus between all the, uh, all the members in the group first, and then uh, write this single uh, consensus final results to, the, uh, to your uh, data or the, uh, that piece of paper. Another one um, is the current MPI communications, especially those uh, one to all and all to all communications like bcast and uh, uh, all radios, they all need a root to function well. So, meaning you have to specify uh, a root to start the uh, a bcast, and at the same time, you have to set up a bunch of receive to receive this uh, bcast, and this have to be uh, done in the explicit way. But in the real uh, real world, you don't know when and where uh, a process uh, wants to really do the bcast, and you don't. So you you don't want to uh, uh, let this to uh, to limit your flexibility to to do the uh, uh, to do the uh, programming. So typically. Uh, you, uh, the system used uh, rank zero to as a as a root, and everybody send, uh, sends the uh, bcast to this one, and uh, uh, we'll use this one uh, to do the coordinate. Uh, but uh, still, this will be a bottleneck in the large large machine. Uh, another one is multi-threading, uh, because current MPI is not fully uh, supporting the uh, multi-threading. Although there are some research projects, uh, still is not quite mature. So uh, on the single node, how to handle the concurrency is still, still a problem. So to solve that problem, solve all of these, uh, for the first one, to make the consensus, we, de uh, we design a, a distributed voting uh, mechanism uh, to reach the consensus. And for the second challenge, we uh, implement a set of new serverless operations to do the bcast and uh, uh, all radios. So 
to call this function, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to uh, specify uh, a root, and you just start, you just start it, and everybody uh, will receive the results. Uh, for the multi-threading, um, because it's not supported, so uh, we're using, we're imp actually we implement um, our own progress engine. So it's the state machine with a bunch of message queues to uh, track different states of each of the uh, events or uh, the messages. And uh, we encapsulate all of these uh, into a single layer of the HTML5 wall connector. And uh, this is the overall architecture of the uh, HTML5 wall connector. So a wall, which is a virtual object layer, uh, this is this is just a layer of the whole stack of HTML5. So this intercepts all the requests from the application, and to change this, either to change this uh, request or uh, to alter this or to reroute this, and then to after all all of the uh, these uh, operation, uh, you will flush to the uh, HF5. And um, worth to note that the, the uh, ball plug, the ball connectors here, it's stackable. That means if you have uh, a bunch of different functions for different balls, you can stack them all together and have the feature, uh, have all of the features together. So this is the architecture uh, for our uh, independent metadata. So when the process HF5 um, received the uh, request, you will look at that. You will look at if this is the uh, change to the meta, uh, to the uh, metadata. And because for now only the only the collective of method operations need to be uh, modified here. So we only cover that part. And uh, the local method that change will be rerouted to this uh, method manager. And uh, this, uh, all, of, all of these big box and uh, small components are uh, stay inside of this uh, wall layer. If a local change uh, is made and uh, the manager, the manager will try to send this uh, through uh, through a B cast, and this this is the rootless one. So, and then every, when everyone receives this, they will try to vote on this and uh, and to see if this change is compatible with my own change. If not, then I'm gonna uh, vote no, and uh, this and the system will collect the, the response and to make the make the decision if this change is being uh, approved or not. And all of these uh, will give the final results to the next level of the wall connector and then to apply, to apply the uh, change to the um, final file. So for implementing this, um, the first one is the uh, the rootless or the serverless communication, uh, which is the bcast and the IO reduce. So we implement this over this scape ring overlay network. So we we arrange all the participant ranks into this uh, scape ring. Uh, this is the modified uh, uh, structure of this skip list. So each of them have a, a static. Uh, receiving channels and sending channels, so they don't have to. Um, <clears throat> they don't have to change the uh, those parameters during the uh, program program running, and uh, the big has happened like this. So if uh, uh, the node two wants to do a big cast, so here you will just send uh, send the message to to all the available. Uh, Sending channels, and then uh, the receivers uh, they have a I receive already posted, and you will uh, you will decide if if to forward this to the uh, to the uh, next stage, 
and then uh, during the message transferring, uh, the message number is actually doubling uh, almost every uh, every single step. So the uh, communication time is logarithmic. So to do the distributed voting, uh, that still happened on the uh, on this uh, skip ring uh, network. So to abstract the, uh, all the nodes participated, uh, we can we can look at the, the on the right side. Actually, this is uh, this is the uh, the communication tree extracted from uh, from the left side of uh, the uh, the ring. So when the proposal. Uh, we call a method that change a proposal uh, before it's really uh, really uh, being being made to the file. If a proposal is uh, is initiated from uh, from rank one, and uh, the receivers will be cast and uh, uh, do the forward to the next stage. If this if the uh, proposal is compatible with its own. So in this case. Uh, Rank two and the rank four, they all accept the, uh, that change and think that uh, that change doesn't break my own thing. And also other, uh, other ranks, ex except for the rank six here. Rank six, fine, you will break my, uh, my own metadata. So I, I say no. And then uh, you will vote, vote back with a no answer. And uh, uh, within this tree, the uh, the response is being uh, aggregated. So only when a node receives all the necessary res responses, uh, you will merge all of these uh, into a single single um, load response. And then uh, result into a single, uh, single response uh, received by uh, rank one here. And the result here uh, is uh, the proposal is being, being denied. So if, um, if this is the, uh, so in this case, the uh, rank one is the initiator and uh, all other ranks are uh, the receivers. If they don't have any, um, any their own uh, metadata change, then they will, uh, they will always accept any change received. Only when uh, they find a conflict and they will, um, they will deny and uh, uh, because of the uh, decision. So for the um, non-thread concurrency handling, uh, we use uh, uh, we we actually build uh, three uh, two different uh, progress engine uh, on different levels. One is for the communication, uh, another is for the uh, distributed voting, and this uh, this involves uh, a little more technical details and. And uh, I put this into a, a backup slides. If you're interested, I can, I can uh, get to that part a bit later. So in terms of the uh, results here, the baseline uh, is, the, uh, is the default, which is the uh, collective metadata. And the yellow, uh, the yellow bar here is the uh, fully uh, distributed voting and uh, independent metadata. So you can see here, actually the, uh, the performance is pretty poor. Uh, to, be on, to be honest, it's uh, quite slow. Uh, so the uh, light green one, uh, so the direct, direct B-cast one uh, is the one we try to uh, make, make some uh, compromise between these two. And uh, the performance is uh, between uh, these two. And the reason we got this performance mostly is because uh, we didn't get enough uh, enough time and resource to do all those optimization. And uh, HD5 have been optimized uh, on this for uh, more than 20 years. So it so it's uh, mostly it's just a uh, the matter of the uh, time and uh, money resource. And uh, for the application developer's pers pers perspective, so here is, um, this is the 
the simplest case when you try to do the uh, metadata update. So to just as create a single data set. And uh, if you use this uh, framework, then uh, the application can be uh, simplified quite a bit. And especially when the, uh, when the data structure within your HTML5 is complicated, like you have a lot of data set in the, uh, in the group and uh, in each of file, you also have multiple layers of the groups. And then um, you, when you create and change the, all of this structure, you are touching the uh, metadata and the, the, uh, the load operation and the code will be much more complicated than, uh, than this. Actually, you, uh, you'll have to do multiple nested for loops here. And also after each of them, you'll have to do, uh, you have to wait for the last sync point to finish and then, the, and then to start another, uh, another uh, update within that structure. So uh, to improve the performance of the system, uh, the first one is to uh, invest more time and resource. Uh, just uh, like I said, we have only uh, a year and a half to work on this. And uh, uh, HFI group uh, spent 20 years to optimize. Uh, and also because the uh, current code base is using the uh, progress engine to handle the uh, concurrency. So the parallelism, uh, the available parallelism provided by all those uh, fancy hardwares and multiple cores and uh, hyper-threading actually are uh, not fully utilized. So if we can uh, use a uh, fully supported uh, multi-threading and uh, use, a, use a dedicated thread to play the role of each of those uh, progress engine, I believe that the system will, uh, will be running uh, way more uh, efficient because uh, in, the current, in the current implementation, uh, we're using a sliding window uh, technique to, to avoid the, uh, to avoid uh, the misalignment of all those uh, operations because the the order of the metadata operation actually matters quite, quite much here. And also we're trying to, uh, trying to contact the, uh, the MPI forum. So to uh, include the, these uh, ruthless operations uh, into their, to, uh, their standard. Then uh, all those low level hardware benefits uh, can be used by the, uh, by uh, these operations. So um, as a conclusion, so this will be um, useful for application designers and users. Uh, and this is by uh, largely simplify the uh, metadata operations, like create, change, resize, and uh, uh, to add or to, uh, to write new uh, attributes. And all of these are, uh, all of these uh, can be uh, simplified. And uh, the, the code will be uh, more intuitive. So it's not like you have to, everyone have to do everything uh, on uh, every single place. And the, so in the new way, Actually, it's a more natural way. Uh, you only do your own thing on your own place. So the code, uh, the application will also see the HTML5 more like a local file system. And uh, actually, this is the, one of the uh, initial goal of HTML5. Um, for system software designers, uh, these, uh, these techniques and uh, uh, components actually can be used as building blocks. So the MPI ruthless uh, primitives itself, uh, itself is gener generic and it can be uh, used with any uh, MPI uh, application. Um, for the uh, consensus making platform, uh, it can also be used, uh, used by uh, other uh, software and uh, don't have to change uh, a lot of code. 
and because we designed the, uh, we designed the consensus making uh, using a plugin mechanism. So actually, you can you can choose different uh, different ways to do the uh, voting and uh, to to use different policy to decide when to uh, approve and when to uh, deny a pro proposal. Uh, in one of our uh, ongoing projects, uh, we're, uh, we're using POSIX file system uh, to reach the consensus. And uh, that's also uh, can be plugging in, into uh, this independent, independent uh, metadata platform. Uh, and of course, uh, performance, uh, because it's still poor, so uh, we need some more performance work to do. And the code now is uh, already open source and under the BSD license. Uh, so we can have a try to uh, do some small uh, benchmark. But at this point, because, uh, because the performance is not as good as the, those native ones, so uh, this is more on the uh, functionality perspective. And uh, that, uh, that's pretty much uh, all.